Hi everyone, this is Alf Ali. Welcome back to the channel, Bowman's doing okay. So today I'm doing a VOD review. This is actually for Fluffy, and we've done a lot of Fluffy VODs before, as you guys have probably seen on the channel. Uh, they are currently diamond free, and what they've put is I've been playing a lot um since the last VOD, like you suggested. I think uh, I've got comfortable playing again. I was in a five stack, which sometimes throws me off, and all advice is welcome. Okay, so uh, first of all, Fluffy, obviously, I remember we did talk about last time about getting into the game a lot more. Fluffy took a little bit of a break from the game, came back, and I could definitely tell that Fluffy was quite rusty with how they were playing and stuff like that. Um, so I guess we'll kind of like look to see how smooth that's gotten. Obviously, looking for other pieces of advice I can get to them. Uh, also, being in a five stack means you've got some brilliant comms here as well. So make sure whenever you're queuing with people to use them to your advantage because it's really, like, really, really great. Um, but yeah, so just before we get into the VOD, would you like your own free Mercy VOD review? I do them live on my Twitch on Sundays at 2 p.m. in the UK, but don't worry if you can't make that time, as I also do them offline and upload them straight to YouTube as well. They only cost 7,500 koala moolah, or channel points as they're probably better known, which you can get completely for free by watching like my stream, basically. I also stream on Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays at around 5.30 p.m. UK, so be sure to hop on over there, get saving, and you can have your very own VOD either shown live on stream or if you're done offline and just be posted to YouTube afterwards. For more info, do not be afraid to hop into the stream or come and join the Koala Creek Discord and ask one of my lovely mods over there. The link for that will be in the description. Now, back to the VOD. And yeah, so I guess we'll just get straight into it. We are using uh, Fortune right now. Fortune is like posting one of my um, my favourite like epic skins, to be honest. It's really, really pretty. Um, Very like nice and simple skin. Um, looking at our team comp as well. Uh, looks like we do have a hog. Obviously, really, really great to damage boost them hooks. Far is going to be our main believing target. Just obviously be careful for the ash. Um, You won't know yet because obviously you've not seen their team comp. But you'll see in a second that they will have uh, the Sombra um, Tracer. Which means you might need to start peeling for the ash a tiny bit more. We do have Life Weaver though as well. Life Weaver um, obviously means that we're going to have to really try and push that Blue Beam as much as possible because there's going to be very little damage on this comp because we have that Life Weaver. But because you do have that Life Weaver, it does mean as well that we don't need to peel as much and he can very much, you know, be able to heal a lot basically. But nice. So, already setting up with a far. Very, very nice. Loving these little cancel GAs around the side. Nice. Very, very nicely played so far. Nice looking out. Obviously, we're having to come up with Farah. Love how much you're using your cover usage right now. Really, really nice. It's just unfortunate your team end up getting taken out as you're committed with the farmer there. Nice link up to the high ground there. Nice. What I would do here, I would actually get myself up into this building. The reason is because we can hear um the what's it called? We can hear the diva and we know the diva wants to dive up onto us. We want to either save our GA for when we definitely know that she's um Dover's. Or be proactive and be already up here waiting for that far as the divers, okay? We know what team comp they have now. They have this tracer, they have this sombra, okay? This means we're actually really, really free to do whatever we want with far here. We are very, very free to just play up in the air as much as we want. And the only thing is that we just need to make sure that, you know, we're making sure that we're outbaiting the um the divas boosters and stuff like that. But we don't need to be playing really, really close up against these walls or anything because oh, they've got an ash that's trying to shoot us down. I don't need to be playing like really really smart against you know these things because they have that sombra tracer so it means yes you know definitely um still like play your cover like you know a little bit but we don't need to be as strict as we would if we we're playing against like an ash or something like that They're really really great obviously we can see the the diva chasing us nice i would have done a sling just to get us really really far away from the diva here we want to try and just get ourselves away from the diva maybe force the diva into our back line if we can and then going back in. We just want to make sure that we're we're kind of like basing this diva out with the boosters. With diva's boosters, we don't want us to GA and then her to boost her. Because then it means that she's going to end up just absolutely mowing us down. Because our GA is going to be on cooldown. We want to either try to use as cancel GAs as much as possible. And either bait the diva into like a certain position that is, is not the best. Or we want to make sure that she's going to dive us first with her boosters. And we're using our GA to get ourselves away from her. Because remember, her boosters on a 4 second cooldown. Ours is on like 1.5, 2.5 whatever depending on the text we've used the two reses one in front of the tank and one in the sky i got told um i was good uh, for them and the team were watching or i wasn't going to go for them otherwise oh okay i'm gonna be looking at them uh in a second hold on i need to get back onto you but nice nice getting your beam back onto your farer nice love how you go i love this i love how you go to go damage um the the what's called the ash here before you go up with the farer because you know like with, with how farer plays she's not going to start shooting until she starts getting up a little bit more she's going to use her movement to go up so i love this beam management from you here really really nice 
Nice. Your Ash has gone in a little bit aggressive here. I So instead of being with your Farah here, I'd actually look to go in with your Ash. The reasoning is because, yes, Farah is your best blue bean target here. Do not get me wrong, okay? But look at how many people are focusing this this diva right now okay you have life weaver here to help with the grip and you have hog here as well and you have far is shooting from behind far is also really really healthy but let's look at our ash okay our ashes end up going in really really aggressive and she's currently 2v1 what i would do here is i'd be looking just to maybe a little counsel g or something just to get around to her to help her like stay up if she falls that's fine because then we can you know because we used a counsel g it means we can go back to our far if desperately needed but we we need to try and like just kind of help peel for her here if we can she ends up falling sadly. Use that as a flick to get up above, by the way. Um, up above there. Nice. So we know that Far is gonna be there. Uh, sorry, Sombra Eva. Nice. So obviously, you know, you've gone to ping it as well, and you've got your um your Faro to help you, because obviously, you know, you do have that Sombra. Really, really nice there. Obviously, if we don't have our Faro with us there, we don't want to res that in case of the hack. So it's really, really nice that we have, you know, we called it out and we made sure we had people with us. Very, very nice. Nice the nice flick onto the blue beam as well. Uh, on the hog as well for that hog. Really, really well played so far though, Fluffy. It's really, really great to see. Nice. Obviously, we end up kind of playing. P push forward here. Push forward here. We want to really commit the Farah because our Farah is quite close to Barrage and she she's been an aggressive. Whenever we see Farah use a lot of her movement abilities like this, we want to try and commit in with her, okay? If because Brain Man as well, Life Weaver's just uses platform. If a Sombra is trying to attack him, she would have to then translocate up onto the Life Weaver, in which case hopefully your Life Weaver should win that 1v1, okay? Um so because your Life Weaver's used that platform, it means he's gonna be quite safe from anything that's gonna attack him. Like the Sombra, for example. So he's going to be pretty fine. He can just sit here and heal the hog and obviously help your Ash. Plus, as well, you have these comms, okay? So if your life weaver does need any help from you, he should call it out. Or if you hear anyone that's going to be struggling, then you can go back, okay? So what I would do here is I'd be going forward with your Farah. Really, really hard commit in here. Nice. Nice cancel GA as well, though. Very, very nice. Very nice. Ooh, okay, okay. Oh, this was so good. This is so good. Okay, let's quickly rewind it. Because I respect your decision making here. It's just unfortunate that you do get a pull. Did Life even use this pull already? Ah, oh, he used it to pull the hog. Okay. They called out some, but that's why I turned around. Okay, nice. So... This is completely fine. You blocking off this LS is absolutely perfect. However, as soon as you get that GA online, because you could already hear the diva wanting to come and dive you, okay? As soon as you get that GA online, you need to GA. Because you end up kind of waiting about for a second. Love this. I love this, okay? Now, stay here. Stay here. Because you want to stay here and wait for... Oh, I say you can't really stay because obviously the divas end up kind of diving for you. I would send up, I would honestly, I would just stay here rather than dropping back because obviously we don't want to drop back because of the people in front. I would just look to kind of flick myself up here and then kind of make it look like I'm going to stay up here, like how you're doing with the diva, and then geeing yourself out back to your life weaver or getting an LOS of your life weaver. It's just unfortunate that you used the pull onto the hog earlier, so it means we're probably going to end up kind of getting caught out by this. But I think my biggest piece of advice I could probably give to you in this kind of scenario is making sure that you're using that GA as soon as it comes off cooldown with the with the Sombra. I love, obviously, you know, your use of cover and stuff like that. But we end up kind of just standing for a little bit too soon. It means then that we can actually use our GA to get ourselves a little bit further back from the from the D.Va, even, like, going all the way, like, back here or something like that, basically. But I respect the decision-making, obviously, that you made at the time. It's just make sure that we're, we're GAing ourselves a little bit sooner than what we did, basically. But it's all good. We unfortunately end up falling. Let's see what our team ended up doing. We actually get the Lucio, so it's pretty even right now for our team. Just hoping that our Faro doesn't fall. Nice. Fortunately, your Faro ends up dying to it. What I would you do is I'd be, I, I would ask you, before your life even jumped in here, I would ask for him just to wait a second. The reasoning is because if he waits for you a second, we would be able to get a really like, nice straight GA and go straight to Res Farah. Now we're going to have to do this, like, unfortunately, like, quite long walk. It was just a slight lack of communication here, I feel like, to get you back in. But nice. Oh, if, if you ever are coming up to a, to a res like this, hold your res button. If you hold your res button, it means as soon as you are available to get that res online, it will start resing. So you do end up doing like a GA and then kind of like, what's it called? What I would have done here is I would have done a quick little cancel and then making sure that we were like holding res as we're doing so. 
Um, so it means that as soon as it's done, we can get that res off like straight away. It's just unfortunate it doesn't happen in, but it's all good. We'll just kind of see how we end up going from there. So we're pushing up with Ash. Nice. Okay, so we don't want to be hanging about here. I, I just want to say, I know you're looking for your farer, okay? It's nice that you're looking for your farer. Sorry. I forgot you had a farer, to be honest. That's all good. Nice. Nice res in the air. Obviously, you know that you're okay to do this because you've lost both DPS. Well, so they've lost both DPS, like the Ash and everything like that. But even then, really, really nice res, obviously, up in the air with your father. Very, very nice. Very well played res there. Very nice. Hang out here on these stairs instead of in here. Uh, the reason is because they have an easier access to get to you here. And also you only really have like one escape route unless if you like you go around like the back here kind of thing. Because what's gonna happen is when your far is gonna back off, you're gonna just go GA this way and it makes you very, very predictable for where you're gonna go. And also you're playing way too close to these guys, okay? Instead, play along this side. It gives you more time to listen out for people either coming up these stairs or coming into this room. But also it gives you more options to be able to GA out because you can, you know, use you know, you can get behind here with a far and do a wall bounce around. If you want to GA this way, which I wouldn't recommend, then obviously, you know, you could GA through this way. Uh, but my biggest thing would be, you know, sitting here with your farer, then we you know the farer's gonna back off, use her as a wall bounce to get around here, basically, and then we're still playing out of LOS, so we're still backed off like this, basically. So we're not, what's it called? So we're not kind of, like, just hanging hanging about, like, near an opening, basically. So it's just, like, a, a slight correction to your positioning just to make it a little bit better, basically. Nice. Nice. Pop in the vault, because why not? Obviously, you guys are progressing quite quite aggressively here. Nice. Don't worry too much here about topping up far as you're coming back, by the way. I would just focus the damage boost here onto your, your hog. It's more important here that we try to back people away from point with this whole hog and maybe even get a pick off than healing up our far right now, okay? Remember, we have Life Weaver here. Life Weaver is playing very, very passively and he can, and he can very easily like top up your far for you. It's not like you're running like a Mercy Brig, for example, where it means you have to like, the majority of the healing. Just push that damage boost a little bit more here. Nice. Really, really good round. First round so far. Really, really nice. Oh, well, Fluffy, it's really, really great. It's just, like, slight positional or, like, decision-making errors from you, basically. Um, where it's mainly just, like, either you're kind of, like, in, like, a, a, a bit of a, a bad spot or something. But those, like, correct themselves over time as you play more and you experience, like, more games on the same maps and stuff like that. But with that, you're playing really, really well so far, Fluffy. Let me quickly speed up a bit. I love as well. Oh, oh, we're playing Lucio Mercy. I was just about to say, I like how your life was going to speed out. Okay. This is a complete 360 now, okay? This means that we're going to have to kind of spend a lot more time looking around at the ground to make sure that our team is okay. Yes, we want to try and commit more Farah, but this is where our communication becomes extremely important because we need to let the Farah know when we have to peel back for people so she doesn't end up going in aggressively. All right? Because we don't want her to like go in and think that you're with her when you're in reality peeling for your ash, okay? That's good. They are in double hit scan now, which you could probably tell. So it means we got to play a lot more like closer to cover and everything. Nice. That's just unfortunate. Ooh. Okay. I respect the risky res here, but make sure that we have an escape route when we're doing this risky res, okay? Uh they called it out a lot. It was stressful. No, it was the right sweep. I'm going to quickly talk about this though because I I respect this res, but at the same time, it should have been it should have been a little bit better from you. Okay, so this is fine. So, we know that we're okay to res here. The reason is because what's Diva going to be able to do to us apart from tickle us? Because she's just used boosters on her DM to be able to go to the, you know, go and dive the farer. This means that she's got no boosters and she's got no, obviously, like, you know, big missiles to be able to get to us okay so this is a completely fine res my only thing is be looking out and also make sure that you're calling out as well this res this is res i was told to go for i was so scared 
Yeah, so make sure that you just make sure that you're, you're talking to these guys. Make sure that you tell them, like, I am committed to this res. Really nice res. I respect this res because this is a very aggressive res. I like it. Just make sure that we know where we're going to go after this res, okay? We have a, we have an ash that's right here to be able to go to. Also, we could just drop ourselves to the ground as well if we desperately need to. And then do, like, a because what will happen is then the demon might drop for us, in which case we can, like, sling ourselves back up and then over to the roofs like you do in just a second. But it's just all about making sure when we do these reses that we know that we have an escape route to be able to get out so really nice i would have maybe like not done it like jumped up as much as you did like maybe just cancel it and then just kind of stand here with it basically just so we're not like you know going closer to the diva if we can unfortunately ash hasn't fallen but remember her orb is still here so we could have used that to get out nice just unfortunately she ends up boosting out of our los nice backing out in a way unfortunately don't have res anymore nice Stay, stay hooking this wall. We we don't need to move here because there's no reason for us to move. So we could just vibe on this this side here, like helping the hog basically. So we don't end up taking damage from from the, you know, like the healer's rocket and everything. They end up taking damage from. But other than that, I'm pretty sure it's kind of like a, a a dumb fire at this point, unfortunately, just purely because it's only like you and the hog, and you've not really got anyone else basically. Um, but if you need to, just make sure that you kind of like just hugging this wall. And then what I'd be doing is I'd be constantly checking this um this high ground here by the way because obviously you switch to tracer now but a lot of times people will come up onto these high grounds and everything so it means that we can like quickly like gee ourselves back up to these guys if we desperately need to or maybe use them as like a little like ga buddy hop to be able just to get ourselves back out a tiny bit more basically um but yeah that's all good we keep on going we'll probably just end up kind of resetting here unfortunately uh we have to get the diva though which is really really great we'll have to see what ends up happening Nice. Okay, so if we call about that, I'm coming back from spawn here, so it means that your forest should be able to come and pick you up. Nice. Watch your Lucians are getting picked off. That's not going to be a res either, unless if you get help with it. But that's fine. Just make sure when you're with your far here that you're still looking around. It's even more important right now because obviously, you know, your loose heroes end up falling. So it means you definitely don't have a second support. So what I'd be doing is I'd be making sure I'm still looking at my hog and like just making sure that I know where they are. The reason as well that I'm going to be looking out for these guys, not just to obviously to peel for them, but also because they provide really good movement opportunities, okay? Remember, like, because I, I see it a lot with, uh, with, um... The people that are playing far and mercy they think that all they could do is just ga to the farer because oh pocket farer ga 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 okay and i only ever see them going with the farer instead you know remind yourself yes farer is going to be a really, really good target especially if we still want to like keep ourselves up in the air but if we wanted to take, make our movement slightly a little bit you know different i guess what we can do is you know we have these other opportunities we have our hog we have our tracer and stuff like that that we can use to get ourselves to other high grounds or like make our movement slightly you know a little bit unpredictable basically so it's just a little bit of a note for like future reference i guess but nice Same thing again. I, I heard a tracer recall, which is obviously going to be your tracer recalling. At this point, I'd be panicking and trying to look where where she is on the just in case it needs to drop because obviously our Lara is gone. We want to try and keep our tracer up here because we're committing to this team fight really like aggressively here. So whether it's like I play on this um this side ever so much, like waiting for the tracer to come out and just tell the tracer I'm on the left side, you know, above you or something like that, or I'm at, like above point because then it means that the tracer can blink out to come and you know get healed from you basically. But we just want to make sure that we're still looking out on the just in case. You know. Unfortunately, Tracer ends up getting taken out. But it's all good. Love this positioning here. I love how you're not doing anything too risky. Nice backing out. Obviously, we heard the, the Ash. Nice. We need to exit Soldier a little bit sooner, by the way. Um, So this is fine. You obviously, you know, you're playing up here. However, as soon as our forest starts backing off a little bit, make sure that we're correcting that to really drop back. So obviously we don't want the, the soldiers to start focusing us. I uh, just think so we're dropping back a little bit sooner there. Nice. Obviously, you know, pushing up with the farer. Completely fine. Just once again, if you can, look back at your team a little bit more towards the end of it just to make sure that they're okay because we obviously be committed. Nice quick res. Love that res. Nice. Oh, which is unfortunately end up getting the beams. 
Oh, okay. Right, let's quickly talk about this because I feel like it's <laughs> you felt like you end up getting a little bit lost here, okay? Remember, if you end up in a in a weird spot, do not panic, okay? Just look for another good spot. So love this res okay the reason why this is such a good res is obviously you know the farmer is going for barrage which provides a really, really good piece of cover and all the people on point are currently contesting these guys so it means that we're what's it called so it means that you, we're, we're completely free to res here because obviously you know nobody's gonna end up like attacking us or anything so really the nice res here love this okay we could have maybe corrected this ever so slightly by going up onto the high ground preemptively okay because the reason why we want to go up here is because it it means that we're not going to be an LOS of the Ash, okay? Because the Ash, we know the Ash is on point and everything, right? So if we go up preemptively, it means then that we can kind of like just vibe up here and we're not going to take any damage from, obviously, the people on point or anything. So I feel like it's just like a, a little bit of an extra thing because if we're playing up here, it means that we don't get dynamited in a second by this Ash. Instead, we're already preemptive the Ash and we're already up on this high ground, okay? So just being like a little bit more proactive with how we're positioned and where everyone is. Obviously, it's unfortunate that our beam ends up disconnecting. Okay, beam disconnects. We know that we don't have res because we've already done it onto the, um, onto the, uh, what's it called? Alari. So at this point, I would just kind of think to myself, okay, Ash did not coach gun up. Like, Ash gun didn't finish her coach gun to get up, okay? That means that we're going to be okay, but I would be back into the edge of this point ever so slightly a little bit and maybe just wait for the dynamite to finish because you end up kind of like just standing here like, oh, oh my gosh. And do, do you see who's respawned? the soldier on the opposite high ground. Bird man DPS, his guns love these two high grounds, okay? So what I'd be doing is as soon as as soon as the forest has gone, either using her orbs to get myself um away or like back to my team or something. We just don't want to be kind of like stood here panicking basically. Like we end up doing. But it's a good it's just unfortunate that she hasn't fallen. I'm hoping your Alari isn't staying alive because we've got the pile or not. Your Teresa I think died to the, to their own pool spawn, which is a little bit unfortunate. But it's so good. Oh, with that though, Fluffy, really, really, like, just well played. Just once again, it's just the same thing of, like, making sure that we're playing still in our cover if we can. Okay? Nice. Remember, they still have kit scans, so just make sure that we're using them pieces of cover. Very, very nice. Ooh, okay. A bit of a panic valve here. Let's quickly re-talk about this. It's unfortunate that I'm on my console today as well. So I can't, like, <laughs> quickly, like, go back or anything. But I'll quickly, I will quickly talk about this, okay? So... Go with Farah, this is completely fine. Play risky here. Either play risky and stay up here, or go up onto this roof here. The reason is, or like even you could like, I, I think you could stand on this. I can't remember to be honest. It's been a hot, it's been a hot minute since I played Farah. I got stuck on the railing. Yes, but the reason, the reason why is because you end up opening your angle. Okay. Because you jing yourself back over to here, don't get me wrong, it's really, really great positioning. But can you see how we're now just open, out in the open? And we're so free to be shot by anyone that's going to be attacking. Because we know they're going to start attacking from here. We know we're going to, they're going to start either attacking from underneath here. They're going to come from main. Or they're going to come up from this high ground where you are right now, okay? So how can we avoid this or really, like, make them come to get us? Well, we can still stay in beam ridge of the far here. But we could either stand up on, you can stand up on this like little ledge here. You could also stand up on this thing, but it's a little bit like, what's it called? A little bit more risky. We could also G ourselves up above the roof here so we can vibe up here. We could also vibe up here like this, basically. Can you see how we have a little bit of better position here? And yes, it does mean that we're slightly in the enemy back line. But it, on this map, it is your best piece of like, what's it called? Cover that you can use basically vibing up here. Because uh, if we end up kind of coming around here and our far is not wanted to come around here, it means then that we're opening up this angle to all the DPS that are going to end up shooting us, okay? So just play it safe, play tight. Because if you're vibing above them, how are they going to be able to get to you? All right? Ash, Ash would obviously have to turn around, in which case, oh, you know, I'll just slot back or, like, you know, come around to the side. Save a soldier, you know, you're making them turn around and stop shooting at your far, which hopefully at that point your far should be able to attack them at that point. And obviously Diva, you're forcing her to use her boosters to be able to come to you, in which case, oh, and then, you know, just G away. All right. So unfortunately, we do end up obviously getting a little bit stuck. We end up popping the battle for survivability, which I, I respect, to be honest. Nice. Nice. Really nice. Because obviously we saw. Love that. 
love all of this okay i love how much you focus on um, the damage boost of the whole hulk because obviously we know that diva's already used a lot of her dm so i love how you focus that down really, really nice i love how you lead the beam linger on as well as he goes for that hook while we end up going around really really nice just make sure that we're not jing ourselves into the ash as we're just doing right now nice very very nice very very well communicated here because i i was so scared that you were just gonna go straight for this res while your forest still committing really really good game sense here and obviously listening to your team knowing that you want to push up with the farer and then you're obviously communicating i'm gonna go peel back to go and go for the res so they can be a little bit less aggressive very very nicely well played here very nice really obviously really good communication by you guys at least i'm hoping so because your farer went in quite aggressively so if that wasn't communicated, make sure you communicate it. But if that was communicated, then really, really great. All right. Nice. Really great. And a really good stagger as well to the Moira. Nice. Okay, so I've been looking to see what kind of ultimates they're going to be coming up with. I know obviously they're going to have visors. So it means I, was, I want to kind of play in the, uh, the cover. As much as I can. Make that a sling um, over to this high ground here. Because you now get it doing these like two GAs of like... GA, and then you'll end up coming over to here in just a second. Just make that a, a straight sling straight away. Yeah, because you end up doing two movements here when you could have just done one. By doing the sling early as well, it means we have our GA ready to be able to go with our Farah here. But it's very much kind of like just reading where the Farah wants to go. Um, which you kind of learn more as you either watch Farahs or like you play more with Farahs, okay? And that's just something that you pick up as you're doing so. Nice rotation, obviously, up to the high. Stay with your hog here. Stay with your hog. Your hog is um, going to start getting dove here by the coalescence and obviously the diva. And your lorry is going to really struggle to try and keep him up here, especially because we don't have a pylon currently active. Oh, we do, but like it's going to get destroyed in a second because it's in a bit of a bad spot, okay? But um, keep, your, keep your beam on your hog here. Once try and keep, it's good that you've gone up to here. Don't get me wrong. You're looking for your farah. But right now, look where your farah is, okay? Your farah is very disengaged in this team fight. She's not going to do anything until she probably comes out here in a second and starts barraging because Dave's going to use all of her abilities to be able to go over to the hog, which leaves a free little rocket barrage incoming probably on this, this doorway in a second. So leave your Farah for a second. She's not doing anything active enough for you to go and damage boost. Stay with your Hog. Stay keeping these guys up and then look for your Farah. I just wait for her to just to go in and go and do something basically before we go in with her. And we can just kind of keep our beams up on these guys. It's the This is the way that we can get ourselves as active with our beams as possible and utilizing our beams as much as possible. Very nice, Rez. Can I just say, I, I, I predicted that so, so well as well, what's going to happen. Very, very nice. But yeah, you kind of like did it in the wrong order where it's like you damage boosted and then you went to go and heal as the barrage went on. We should have healed and gone to damage boost the barrage. I respect the really quick res as well, just the instantaneous res. Nice. Bob's going to go into points. That's fine. We can just vibe around the side. Very, very nice. But I, I respect that res. Nice. Go up here. Because we don't want the diva to now start chasing us. We still want her to have her attention onto the farer, which you can very easily do by simply going up here. Just do a slight little super jump. Just get ourselves up. So we're going to be out of the way. Nice. Very, very nice. Okay. And they're pretty much not going to have any ults now as well because they used all the ults last fight. It's only going to be Bob. And nice, really good game, Puffy. Overall, I feel like you played that really, really well, genuinely. It's very, very nice to see um, you very much, you know, using them, um, you know, with, like, how you're playing. And you definitely feel a little bit more, um, I, I guess, not rusty <laughs> is, the, is the best way to put it. Because, obviously, the last one that we saw from you, you were quite rusty. This one, you feel a lot more smoother. It's really, really nice. Love to see it, Fluffy. Okay, it's absolutely beautiful. Let's start off with some positives, okay? Positives. I love uh, your reses. Your reses are absolutely beautifully communicated and executed as well. You feel more present? Uh, and you are 100% are for the majority of the time. I'm going to touch on that in just a second. But the majority of the time you are, you're like being very active in the team fights and you're being active with your beams and stuff like that. 
Um, and your reses, your reses are really, really great. Okay, honestly, your reses, I think, are probably one of your best things for Fee because it's very, very clear to me that you're going for these instantaneous reses, which obviously you know really off puts um people, and also it's probably like one of the best times to get the res off. With res, it's very hard for you to get a res when it's like the mid orb. It's either you have to do it straight away or at its last legs. Um, so really, really great reses. My only thing with your reses is if we can, try to make sure that we know where an escape route is as we're doing so. So it means that we're not just doing the res and being like, oh, such a cute pretty res, yay! And then, like, we're staying where we are, okay? If we can, when we do these really, really nice reses, okay, as we're doing so, make sure that we're looking to get ourselves out of the team fight as well as we're doing so. So it means that we can do the res and then, bam, straight out of there, okay? Uh, really, really great, okay? Uh, but look, at the majority of the time, your positioning is really, really great, okay? It's just... Because you're using your normal positioning like you would do with, like, any anybody else, okay? But with Forest and with Echoes, especially on maps like Ilios, they will be a little bit more aggressive and they'll use the roofs a lot more. And, you know, it's just you have to kind of adapt your positioning a little bit towards that. So there were, like, certain points where we end up obviously being in a little bit of a bad position, which obviously I talked about specifically in detail okay but the only way that you get better at that is either playing with far as more and playing with echoes more or you sit and you watch or you go play far yourself that's also it depends if you want to go and play far okay or you sit and you watch other high rank farers and you look to see how they are positioned because if you look to see how they are positioned themselves um then we can look to see how we can play with them, okay? Because if we learn how the Farah wants to play, that's how we get better. And that's honestly, that's how you get better in Mercy in general as well. Because if, if you know what your team wants to do and you know how the team should play, you're already being proactive and you know exactly where to position and where to be, okay? So just, if we can, um, just watch, like, if you can, either go and watch over far and Echo players or just get practicing and playing more with, like, obviously, either in a duo with um, Faras and stuff like that. I just get really, really used to kind of, like, how they position and how we should position ourselves as well as we're doing that. Um, Valks, I don't think I've got, I've got any issues with your Valks. Just obviously, one of them was a panic Valk due to the positioning, which obviously we talked about. Uh, so I, don't, I don't really have any issues with your Valks. Um, I think the main other thing, uh, Fluffy, is just purely getting ourselves a little bit better with um, certain beam managements um and certain um what was i gonna say it was like obviously managing your beams <laughs> a, a little bit more like for example there was a few times where we should have been healing the hog while the fire was being passive until the fire goes goes in for barrage and that's when we go and damage boost there were just certain points where like you end up kind of getting a little bit twisted a little bit with like what what we should be doing so it's just kind of correcting that ever so slightly uh but over that though fluffy a really really great vault okay just keep on going keep on playing and just keep on going because I'm I'm really really enjoying your um your what's called your bods right now. This game was super early until I stack in. Um, as I play, I played it and more with the far. I learned the playstyle before and kept up better. Exactly, and I'm glad that you're doing that, sweet. But if you do feel like you're struggling still a little bit, especially on maps where far is really dominant, like um, obviously Ilios is a really really big one. Um, a lot of people play far on uh, Dorado as well, like first point. That's really popular for far. There's a few of like really popular far maps as well. Um, or Echo as well. Um. But yeah, over that like fluffy. If you have any more questions, obviously please do let me know. Uh, but once again, thank you so much for watching on YouTube as well as on Twitch for watching this. You guys saw how you get your own body view at the start. So if you guys want your own body view, then just follow the steps at the start of the video. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all later. Bye.